What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv, video all this stuff, and in this video I'm checking out the Movie Light 300 Dual Color Pro from Lupo. So I want to find out what kind of quality of light you get from this, plus what kind of build quality, user experience, value for money you can expect, but most importantly, whether it's any good. Just one quick bit of housekeeping, these videos are powered by my Patreon backers, and it's a non-profit thing, the idea being that any funds from Patreon I chuck back into the channel, buy gear, review them, and then I basically give them away to you guys once I've finished. Buying gear gets really expensive, so this is just a really elegant way of improving my content, plus you get the opportunity to win some really awesome gear, so it's win-win. So what is this? The Lupo Movie Light 300 Dual Color Pro is an Italian-made variable color temperature chip on board light designed for professional use. Let's run through the features now and we'll start with the excellent Bowens mount, which is just so convenient and opens up a whole world of possibilities when it comes to using peripherals with this. The Bowens mount, it's become the standard and it was the right choice for this light. It's blindingly powerful. It chucks out 14,000 lux at one meter with just the bail bulb and 40,000 lux at one meter with the included hyper reflector. In terms of power, that puts the Lupo in the same ballpark as the Aperture 600X, which is one of Aperture's flagship products, but it's half the price. Just to mention, there's quite a bit of difference in terms of features between the 600X and the Lupo. So aside from that brightness, it's not really very fair to compare the two. So at this stage, you may be thinking, why would I need that kind of power? And I'm gonna get into it in a bit, but there are some really good reasons that maybe you haven't considered that really make the power of this light make sense. The movie light has a color temperature range of 2800 to 6500 Kelvin which is not a huge range, but it is certainly the most useful range for a key light. As you'd expect from a really high quality light, you get high color accuracy. It rates at CRI 96 and TLCI of 98, so your colors are gonna look great when using this. If you're interested and want to learn more about terms like CRI and TLCI, I did a video not so long ago called Videography Glossary, and um, it was a lot of fun to film. I'll pop it up here and down there if you want to check it out. One thing I love is that the movie light can be adjusted from 100 all the way down to 0% intensity, which not all lights let you do. My Aperture 300D, which I'm using as my key light at the moment, only dims down to 10% minimum, and there have been occasions where I wished it went even lower because 10% on that light is still pretty bright, and sometimes the situation demands, you know, just that little bit more moody, you know? The Movie Light 300 has some cool effects built in. Not too many, but enough to be useful. Just as a warning, there will be some flashing lights coming up, so those of you who are sensitive to that, please look away now. You get strobe, lightning, paparazzi, and black and white television. And by messing with the frequency, intensity, and other settings, you could definitely approximate some other lighting effects. So how's the build quality? The Movie Light's chassis is made from fiber-reinforced technopolymers, which is basically high-strength plastic and is built to last big time. I mean, it is rock solid. There's no bend or flex at all. It really feels uh, military grade, and I think it could take a real beating. Checking out the rear panel, and of course we've got our on-off switch, power in and out, and then battery input, DMX through and DMX input. You also get a focus knob, which gives you a little bit of adjustment when it comes to having either flood or spot style light. Something I didn't really consider, but was really pleasantly surprised about is, this is an all-in-one unit. There's no external power unit, there's no external control unit, it's just one single cable for the power, and not many lights have that. My Aperture 300D needs two external units, one for the mains power and one for the controls and mounting batteries on. And have you seen the monstrosity that comes with the higher end 600X? If you haven't, you get quite a large briefcase size power and control unit to operate the 600X. I know there are good functional reasons why the 600X needs that big external unit. I mean, by the way, it weighs five kilos or 11 pounds, but if you appreciate simplicity, then I think you'll really appreciate the all-in-one nature of the Lupo. Speaking of weight, the Movie Light weighs five kilos in total, and whilst that's not light, it's also 
considered light for the power output, it's definitely heavy enough that you'll need to consider getting a really good solid stand for it. Again, the aforementioned Aperture 600X, the actual light unit itself, that weighs more than five kilos. And as we know, that's not an all-in-one unit. There's an optional add-on you can get of a V-mount battery clamp to power the movie light via DTAP. Personally, I don't mind that this wasn't included because I'm usually shooting in places where they have mains power, so that's not a problem. It's not an expensive add-on, but I, I'm quite pleased they did it this way because uh, as I don't use them, I'd rather not pay for that. So there we go. So how about the user experience? Well, the first experience you'll have with it is setting it up, and when the box arrives, there are two things in it, the light and the power cable. So it's just really, like, refreshingly simple. The light unit has a simple display with just a few buttons where you can change the intensity, color temperature, and toggle between modes. From a UX standpoint, I would have preferred dials that you can turn, but I suspect this is to make the unit more streamlined. After all, if you were traveling around with this, a dial sticking out could easily snap off. When dialing in the intensity and color temperature, it would have been really good to have it so that you could double tap a button and it changes the values in useful increments. Like changing the brightness in 10% increments or changing the color temperature in say 100 Kelvin increments. I just found it a little bit fiddly to hit the exact setting you wanted. That is, if you don't have your phone on you. All of these things become irrelevant if you get the excellent Lupo app on your phone and connect via Bluetooth. It's super easy, it unlocks all of the functionality and you can connect multiple Lupo lights. In use, the Lupo app is really great. It's very simple, it's very fast to dial in your settings. I should say, if you're affected by flashing lights, please look away, I'm going to give the strobe function a very quick blast in just a second. You can change between modes along the top here, obviously some of these don't apply because it's not an RGB light, and you can also access the effects and tweak their settings. A huge thing that a lot of people are going to love about this is the fact that it's silent running. There's no fan noise, unlike something like my Aperture 300D, which does. I mean, it's not that noisy when you're just using it in the room, but on my audio track, I can usually hear it. The noise of this thing. Can you hear that? The movie light also doesn't seem to generate much heat, which, you know, when you're shooting indoors in the summer, that can make a really big difference. That's it for the UX. It's clean, simple, and really easy. The only thing I didn't mention is you can connect the Lupo to DMX systems, which I have no intention of doing, obviously, because the controllers can get really expensive. Plus, why would I ever need to when I can connect it to my phone using the excellent Lupo Link app? Anyway, now to the most important bit. How does it look? Here you can see I've got the Lupo rigged up as a key light on camera right. However, it's only at 1% power and I'm using the Aperture Light Dome standard. So obviously you're not seeing anything. It just can't get through those layers of diffusion. At 10%, we get a lovely soft glow on the side of our subject's face. And by the way, I've also got a very soft hair light just off camera left as well. Jumping up to 50% and we can really start to see the power of this light. The Light Dome is about two meters away from our subject. We can see some really beautiful diffused shadows on her face. And then stepping up to full power, you can see our subject squinting a bit because it's pretty bright. We can also see the nice effect of having the dome reflect in her eyes, which is doing the job of a catch light. So nice quality from this light, but also this really shows the importance of having good diffusion to go with it. Next, I've got it on myself with the Light Dome Mini and a bounce. And what I'm going to do is step up in power whilst adjusting the exposure of my camera. I just thought it'd be interesting to see the effect that different powers had on the balance within our scene. Now at 50% and it definitely looks a little more moody. I definitely prefer the diffusion you get from the standard Light Dome, but the Light Dome Mini is commendable still. Stepping up to 75% has seen a jump in our contrast again. The bounce that I've got off camera left is doing a good job of keeping the shadows on the darker side of my face from going too dark. And I should also say that I'm using the Honeycomb Grid with the Light Dome Mini. I just love the dramatic effect it gives. And then at 100%, and you can't tell, but I'm really trying not to squint at this point. Everything in this scene has become more amplified. We've got more contrast, more of a natural vignette around me. So I look pretty chuffed in this scene, and that's because I am. 
Earlier in this video, I asked the question, why on earth would you need this kind of power? And the first and most obvious one for me is to use better and more diffusion. The more layers of diffusion you use, the more power you're gonna need to achieve the desired brightness level but also the softer and more lovely the light looks. For what I do, loads of power is really useful and in particular for doing product B-roll. Believe it or not, when I film my product B-roll clips, I'm stopping the lens down quite a bit, often to, you know, uh, F11, F16. So really I need loads of light for that. And in particular, when I shoot macro B-roll, which I do quite a bit as well, you know how razor thin your depth of field can be with using macro lenses, so you, I really do need to be at sort of f16 or, or smaller aperture. So honestly, it's the more light the better. You know, the same thing goes for shooting in high frame rates. The faster your frame rates, the faster your shutter speed needs to be, the more light you need. You know, I, I can see those guys out there on YouTube that are doing things with the phantom uh, high speed cameras. I can see them using the Lupo with the hyper reflector, full blast, and th they might have enough light. In terms of value, the closest comparison is probably the Aperture 600X, and the Lupo, as I mentioned, is half the price. But it, I really do have to mention that the 600X has additional features like Sidus Link and uh, the uh, included V-mount battery slots. But if you're not bothered about those extra things and you just need a ridiculously powerful, operationally super simple product, the Lupo crushes the 600X when it comes to value. Now it's time for the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros, because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So firstly, it's all relative, but I would say the Movie Light 300 Dual Color Pro offers jaw-dropping value for money. This becomes even more obvious when you start looking at alternatives. The build quality is really noteworthy, and it's super lightweight considering it's an all-in-one unit. The Lupo Link app is pretty great, I'd say this should be the primary way that people use this light. It's really simple to operate and I appreciate that, especially using the Lupo Link app. The quality of light you get is very good. It rates highly on the different color accuracy measurements and subjectively, I love the look. You've gotta love the power from this thing and the way that it delivers it. From a soft, dim glow all the way up to savagely bright. The silent operation of this light shouldn't be underappreciated. After using a noisy light for so long, using this is just glorious and you're gonna love it. And onto the cons, and I'd like to be able to double tap the buttons on the unit to get more definite increments. Of course, this is irrelevant if you're using the Lupo Link app, but sometimes you just want to tweak settings quickly without getting your phone out. Whilst the effects are pretty good on this, I wonder if they could have given us just a couple more options. Things like maybe candlelight or fireplace, that kind of thing. It's not really a con, more just a wish list and definitely something that could be added via firmware if Lupo wanted. I would have quite liked a carry case for the movie light. Having said that, it is super tough and I'm sure it could withstand being chucked around. Not that I'm recommending it, of course. And I believe there is a bag that you can buy from Lupo. But if I'm buying something extra, I may prefer to go for something like a Pelican case for this. Finally, to my opinion, and the Lupo feels like quite a high-end product. It's got bags of power. I love the quality of the light that you get from it. It's built like a tank and all for, relatively speaking, not a lot of cash. I've been a big fan of Aperture's lights for quite a while. They too offer quality at a fair price, but when it comes to value, the Lupo is just next level. I'd say if you don't need all the bells and whistles you get with the 600X, but you still need a ton of power, consider the Lupo. You'll save yourself a ton of cash. I think we videographers get way too into buying, you know, new camera bodies and lenses and sometimes often neglect things like lighting and uh, also audio, but that's that's a subject for another video. When it comes to results, upgrading lighting often can have a way bigger impact on the quality of your video than a new prime lens that you probably don't need. When I think about who this light is for, on paper, ignoring the price, it, it seems really ready for professional use, but when I do look at the price, it opens up the market to so many different video guys. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. That's always the goal of these videos. 
but I want to hear from you. What do you think? Do you, you have a favourite light of this kind of style that I simply have to check out on this channel? Please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear any kind of recommendations that you have. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this one for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.